Okay, guys, another title Tuesday where I couldn't play Nakamura, <laughs> but still I got to play a legend. And of course, I started with F4 openings are not that important, but then I realized I'm playing against Garakamski. Hey, guys, this is someone that I've been following his games ever since I started. And look, first time that I get to play him, and this is the opening that I chose. But anyhow, here I was about to do G3. When I play the bird's opening, I could do it with G3, and it gets very familiar to the positions that we're used to in this course, the King's Indian attack and all of these Fianchero uh, openings. Now, he goes bishop f3, bishop takes f3. And by the way, I chose the e3 line because it's a little bit simpler. So I just didn't want to get into anything complicated with Gata Kamsky. Now, e5, guys, typically all I'm trying to do is to do pawn e4. I need to get that pawn to e4. That's why you see my pawn on d3, my bishop on f3, and then my knight on c3 is ready for me to do e4. At this point, after bishop d6, I'm trying to decide, do I want to do e4 right now? Do I want to trade on e5 first? And ultimately, I decided to do e4 because I calculated that I'm putting pressure on d5 three times, so they don't have the time to take on f4. And then by the time they take on e4, notice that my bishop is going to move out the way so my rook is also defending the pawn on f4. So we get to this position where I feel very comfortable. It doesn't look like it's going to get tactical or anything like that. In my mind, I like that I have the pair of bishops. We have talked about this, and that's why he goes right after my e4 bishop. But then even with, uh, with that move, guys, and I, didn't, I couldn't think of any way to keep the bishop. But now I'm thinking if he goes knight takes e4, I'm going to go e takes d6. Knight takes e6, and then we get to this position where I have rook, uh, where I have the bishop versus the knight. The position is pretty much open, so I'm okay with that. And also, if we get to a rook endgames, I'm gonna have rook and bishop. We know it's a better combination than rook and knight. Now, of course, my opponent saw that lesson where we talked about this, <laughs> and he's thinking now, trying to look for ways to not walk into that endgame. Of course. We're not playing a beginner here, guys. So he goes bishop c5 to preserve the bishop. And I got to tell you, I did not even consider that move. In my mind, he was going to do either bishop e5 or knight takes e4. And just like that, we go into an endgame where we both have bishops. Now, notice that I have an extra pawn, but I have two pawns doubled, isolated on the e-file. And you and I know this is a long-term weakness. So the only way for me to try to defeat Gatakamski is to play, be active, right? Be energetic. So bishop g5, developing with a tempo. Now, I know that the pawn is gone. Doesn't matter. All I want to do is activate my rooks. And I'm thinking my bishop on g5 doesn't allow him to control the only open file. Also, the moment he takes on e5 with the king, my rook goes to the 7th rank. This is the kind of game that I want to go for. Now, h6, I'm okay with bishop h4. G5 he played after, and then I go to G3 defending the pawn. So all of these I'm okay with. I, I couldn't see any ways for my opponent to get me in trouble. But of course, we are playing a legend here. So doubling up the rooks, if he takes, I take back. And now we get we get to this end game that is really, uh, it could be tricky. It seems simple, but it could be really tricky. Now, notice how my opponent, he doesn't have an open file for the rook. So he's trying to open up lines on the king side. For me, I'm trying to do the opposite, keep the king side locked, but it's not as easy as it sounds. Now guys, the other thing to notice is that my opponent is, look at the difference in time. I have uh, over a minute and a half, my opponent has less than a minute. But he's not concerned about that. He's trying to look for ways to get me to give me a hard time and, and win this game. So, of course, I didn't want to take on g4. And my bishop goes to e1 because I'm thinking, of course, a little trick. If he takes on e5, I have bishop c3 uh, skewer. But ultimately, I want to bring my bishop, have the flexibility to go to the king or to the queen side. So here, I'm trying to decide, um, do I take, do I not take? And ultimately, I decided to activate my king, and of course, control more of the g and, and h file. 
And guys, this is basic stuff. Notice that my opponent, he's not doing anything extraordinary. Basic stuff. Activating the king, this is looking more like an endgame. So the king makes sense for him to have it on e6. My king is trying to also get activated. And then rooks and bishops have to get active as well. So all of a sudden, his pieces are way more active than mine. Look at his rook compared to my rook. Look at his bishop compared to my bishop. And, and so on. So here I decided to just take the pawn. I knew he was going to, yeah, he takes with the check. Now I try to continue to activate my king. I don't see any checkmate threats or anything like that. He takes on b2, fine. And now in my mind, I'm thinking, if I want to continue to fight, I need to get my rook to the seventh rank. So check first. If the king goes back, well, his king is going to be cut off. It's going to be passive. If they do something else, then rook h7 and at least my rook is active quick checkmate pattern comes to mind if my bishop were on b4 that would be rook e7 checkmate but uh of course <laughs> there's a long way to go to to get there in the meantime i'm uh, using my active rook being careful not to get checkmated uh bishop before of course i mean i'm activating my my bishop but ultimately it's just a chip trick um now i go back with the tempo and guys after I got this pawn, I'm thinking, well, in these endgames, we had a very good lesson about rook endgames. I only need one passed pawn. So I started, I started to push that pawn, but my opponent also saw that lesson and he got the C pawn passed. From this moment on, this is just time pre pressure and it's really tough to get into time pressure with a player like Gata Kamsky. So uh, anyhow, I did my best here, but I think in one or two moves, I blundered a pawn and then that's the end. With that said, you're going to see when we review the game with the engine that even he made blunders and that makes us all feel feel better. So, of course, sooner or later, I knew that I had to give my bishop for that pawn. Yeah, so he offered the trade of rooks and now I'm thinking if I trade my pawn for his pawn on f6, I sack my bishop for his pawn on c2. This is going to be a draw. But, of course, easier said than done. So here, guys, I had a chance. I missed it. And the game just, uh, I just resigned in a few more moves. So this is just me freaking out, even though I have five seconds plus the increment. That's it. He did a very simple maneuver to cut off, to block my bishop, and the game is over. Now, let me show you quickly with the engine. Um, so the opening pretty standard, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, like I said, trying to get to do e4. And if you look at the evaluation, is completely even. Now, d takes e4 seems to be a better move. So that's a note for next time I play this, this line. Knight e4, that was a great idea by my opponent. Bishop g5, rook d3, trying to be energetic. All of these guys, you should know. Now, rook f1, very nice idea to get to f6. I should have known better. Um, and then... This part, yeah, my opponent starts to do a good move. I start to make inaccuracies and still it is pretty even, but there's a lot of chess to be played yet. So rook a6, I was so proud of that move. Not so good. Finally, I got to the seventh rank. Again, this is, look, 1.40. So this is when, I mean, good advantage for, for white, but I went after that silly trick and it costed me the game. Honestly, I didn't see anything better. So it's not that, I, it's not that bad. But then, guys, the moment they collect on c2, uh, rook d6 with a blunder, I should have activated the king. We know this from the many lessons we've had on endgames. Um, g3, look, you see a few blunders by my opponent. King d3 was a blunder. And the main one is after I drop the pawn, um, in my mind, I'm already lost. I'm trying to create something here. But then after I trade here, my opponent goes king c4. And guys, this is a, again a draw if we go back here look this this was my last chance to draw the game if i had done bishop c1 but um i was freaking out i shouldn't have and the game went away but next time we play uh, we play gatakamski we were going to give him a better a better game so anyways guys i hope that you found some value in this quick game and i will see you in our next lesson